so the topic today is uh, snow circles. Snow stands for uh, stud not on top. Basically, anytime you're when you're building uh, with Lego bricks, that um, the, the, all these round studs when they're not on top, when they're in any other direction, it's called snot. Like uh, forgot who talked about it last time. Dunker, yeah. No, not Dunker. Sorry, Mark. 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 Sorry. So let's just look at some of the basic of a snot. Um, using these different bricks, you can achieve a very fine uh, gradient of slopes. Uh, so looking, looking at this one here, right here. Uh, this is a headlight brick, like this one here. Blue, blues are headlight bricks. And then uh, greens are uh, jumpers, half jumpers. You can achieve, uh, this is, I think this is roughly two uh, Lego design unit uh, steps of uh, gradient. Any, any question on this? Have you, have you seen this, anybody? Yeah. Okay, good. And then a couple other tricks, such as this one. You put four headlight bricks, and you get, a, I guess, a square with a stud on all four sides. And then more common, uh, more com even more, more basic is uh, five plates equals to two studs. So using this, uh, Using this ratio, we can achieve square bricks. We can make square bricks. Uh, I mean, exactly square shapes. So after we go over the basics, so there are a couple, I'll talk about a couple snot uh, methods. The first one is uh, this one, where uh, all four sides are exactly the same. So basically, I try to build this, uh, circular like arch shape using jumpers these are these are jumpers right here these four on the bottom are jumpers and then i repeat them four times on four sides so i can uh, so i can get a a fairly circular shape and same thing with uh, these ones basically try to do something that looks like a arch and then put them on four sides uh, some of them, some of them are better than the others. For example, this one, the biggest one is is uh, more rounded than, let's say, this one. This one is a little difficult, or this one is little uh, not that round. Yes. Um, so this is one way to do this. The second method uh, is a uh, more versatile, I guess. Is that uh, you take a Bram sphere generator. Um, so Bram's sphere generator is uh, this online tool, which is very, very useful. It, it generates uh, LDD, uh, not LDD, they use L, it uses LDRAW. It generates an LDRAW uh, file of any diameter of sphere that you want. You just enter, I, I don't have internet here, but if you go online, go just search Bram's sphere generator, and then you'll find the, the sphere generator, and it'll tell you how to use it. Uh, it basically gives you a circle like this, or it'll give you a ball like this. And then what I do is I take the sphere generated, and then I take the uh, cross section. For example, this one right here, I take, oops, I take the cross section and it looks like this. And then this will be my circle. Right? So you take this cross section of a sphere, you get a circle. Um, this is my second message. And then here, Here's a list of circles I generated using his, uh, using using this method. There, are, well, some are more round than the others, uh, but this is a, I guess, a lot more. Uh, um, it gives you a lot more flexibility than the previous method, because the 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 sphere generator is quite uh, quite useful. It's very useful. But uh, a couple of issues is, uh, well, we'll talk about issues later. So the next method uh, is uh, kind of similar to the first two, except it's even more round because we use uh, uh, curved parts. So 
here are the four or five that I can come up with using this method. Uh, so generally, we use the one by three, uh, one by three curve parts, and the one by two curve parts. The one by four is slightly too uh, too long. It doesn't give you the right uh, circular sh shape. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah. If you use that, you get you get ellipse. That's his next topic. <laughs> <laughs> so to to fill the gap here, I used one of the slope slope part to fill the gap between. You know, to be, to make a bigger bigger square. Same thing here. I used a smaller uh, uh, curve, and then I tried to fill the gap with a uh, with a cheese slope. And this one is a. Uh, more interest or well, it's kind of interesting because it's actually it has a lip 45 degree lip so when you put two, two of them next to each other it makes a it, it doesn't leave any gap in between but it's not exactly uh spherical so that's the third method now uh one here here is one example of using the first method um i can build it Table round table like this one right here, and then the um, another good thing is uh, I can put uh, these snob bricks. The the brick was one stud on side, and then I can these are all attached. These these items on top they're all attached with a stud on the bottom. Uh, so then another issue that I haven't talked about is uh, how to build the re rectangular core that can hold the uh, um, circular edges together. It's actually pretty difficult. So, uh, a couple, a couple of things to, a couple of questions, I guess. Uh, one is, do you want a studless surface, or do you want a stud surface on the on top? Or another question is, uh, do you want this whole this the circle to be like one stud uh, wide, or do you want it to be multiple, like a, like a column? Or do you want it to be two stud to, to be like a bigger uh, or thicker circle? And then do you want uh, cons concentricity? Like this one, I have four studs on uh, here. Do you want it to have some kind of, uh, some kind of method, method of attaching them concentrically to each other? And then another issue is uh, do you, for example, this one, the core, I guess, is exposed. Another um, easier method, easier way to do this is uh, I can cover up the core with uh, uh, with round bricks, with uh, circular bricks, or or dishes, so they're not exposed. So if the core is not exposed, then I can do anything with the core. If they have to be exposed, then they need it takes it's more difficult. So the easiest way to build this core uh, is by using uh, the snob brick, the, the brick was a stud on the side. For example, here, I used the, uh, I guess this can be a, the one by four brick was four studs on the side. And then this one can be just a one by, uh, one by one brick was a stud on the side. And this method is easy because you get connect, you get studs on all the directions. And it's really easy. It's really easy to get all the sh sizes, but the 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 drawback is uh, you get stud on the top, and then uh, it only works with uh, two or more uh, w when this is two or more because in the end you'll get like a small bottom here. So we can do trickier uh, cores like like this one here. You take the headlight. Oops! You take the headlight bricks, and then you, uh, I guess, rotate them into this checker pattern, um, or something like this. Actually, yesterday when, when I was trying to build all of these, I realized some of them doesn't really work <laughs> because Lego is um, as high quality as Lego is. It's not perfect. Uh, if you let, let's, for example, this is this works on paper, and it works in LDD, but it doesn't work in real life because there's there's a 
sm small gap. If you try to do this and then you put a one by four across here, the whole thing is going to break apart. There's too much stress. And this one, I think it works. Uh, I've tried this method before by using tiles instead of uh, uh, plates. For some reason, the stress is not as high on this one. And this one, I, this one doesn't work either. Uh, where? This one? This one? This one? So I, I guess that um, there, there are two problems. First problem is uh, the headlight brick. It's actually not exactly in system. There's a, um, I actually have a blogger, uh, I have a blog. And then when, when I posted this, uh, this post and this guy sent me a, sent me a picture that he, that he actually measured. The, uh, the headlight brick is actually very tricky. It's not quite in system. When you put a headlight brick on, on the side and then you put, a, um, you put this piece, the, the, the one by one brick with a stud on the side on top of the headlight brick, it's not a one by two. And that's, that's where, that's, that's why, that's why uh, this wouldn't quite work because this brick and this brick, they're not exactly the same dimension. There, there is a sl small offset. So, yeah, this doesn't quite work. This works because they're all, uh, this kind of works, I think, because they're all headlight bricks. So, um, it's a little tricky, I guess, to do a completely studless surface. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, you, you, let's, let's say this one, the idea is to attach a one by four on top. Okay. And then whatever that's, whatever the curve that, says. yeah, yeah, whatever this, this thing says. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, another, uh, I guess, so, so all of these are all uh, even numbers. They're, two, they're either four by four or six by six or eight by eight. Three by threes are a little hard, uh, are a little hard to achieve. So the, the best I can come up with is, is this. This is a brick with a stud on two sides. And then from here to here, it's a three stud. What, the, what you get is uh, actually a one by one, by one stud uh, hole in the middle. You, can, you can't attach anything to it, but you can, I guess, Place a studding, but uh, you can place a brick inside this to like cover it up. You can get stud going down, yes. Yeah, but then you also get a stud going up. With a stud on two sides. And a stud on top, I think. Mm -hmm. So if you have stud on all four sides, then you get a stub on top and bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, if you attach to a stick, but then you're not connected to the stick. Yeah. So here are some examples I, I made in LDD using, using this technique. Um, I, I need to now go back and revisit to see if I can actually build all of these. <laughs> <laughs> but as, as you can see, when I put them in a column, I can hide a lot of details. So it's actually easier if I put them in a, in a column. Like the, the surface is, when the surface is not exposed, I can do a lot more tricks to uh, get the, uh, to get the um, studs on the, on the, on the, on the four sides. Hmm? Yeah, they can be mostly hollow, yeah. So I, I was planning to build this for Bricks by the Bay, but I don't have time now. Maybe for next year. So let's look at some, one of the example here. Let me zoom, zoom in right here.
Uh, okay, let's start from the bottom. Oops. So it's something like this. This one doesn't have a concentric surf concentric uh, core. So what I what I can do is uh, make this one uh, make one of the play one by one by two or two stud wide, and then the next one you also have the same um, in the same location you'll have a two stud wide. Then it can be connected, and then here I can have stud going up, and when I have stud going up like this, I can. Uh, I can attach these. Uh, you have questions? Um, so for the first one, should you have the tiles so that you can just stick it on, or do you have to build the second one onto the first one? You build the second one onto the first one. Yeah. So for example, here this problem wouldn't work, but then because it's covered, I can I can omit all the all the stuff in the center, so th there wouldn't be any stress. And same thing here, I can omit the ones in the center. And then now I have a nice four by four studs on top. I can I can uh, try to build this circ this uh, center using the brackets. And then with the brackets, I can expand them out to build something like this. As you can see, there are a lot of empty spaces in the middle. But I, I don't. It's okay. They're all covered. And then gradually going up, I can add more. And then here, um, I use the jumpers because the next one is a half stud smaller. When you go from a five by five to, or like a four by four to a three by three, you miss, uh, you need to shave half stud on both sides. So the jumpers are the best. So well, then it gets more complicated from this point on because it's a five by five surface. It's a five by five core. Then, um, yeah, just gradually building it up. And then. How big is that? How many bricks can you add? I need to check. I think it's more than a thousand bricks. Yeah. More than mm -hmm. for, uh, I think for two pieces it's about a thousand. Yeah. So it's pretty big. I think it'll be like probably like so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Like sixteen sixteen uh studs. Nice. Sixteen studs, so it's one base place height this big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So that just this, this is just a, an example of how how to use this technique, I guess. It's best to cover up, so it's best to cover up the the, the center. And uh, yeah. So a couple other things. Uh, another thing is uh, you can add the existing uh, circular pieces, like the four by four uh, quarter circle. Uh, you can use that too. You can use that here to cover up um, cover up the front, like, like this one. If I put like a four by four or a or four by four, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, the the quarter circle. Then you can cover up everything here. So in in for the like like the rook here, it's all covered up with uh, the top is all covered up with uh, uh, quarter circles. Uh, and then for the queen, it's covered up with uh, uh, with a dish. Yeah. So you can you can uh, mix it, mix it with the existing uh, circles with the circular pieces. Yeah. And that's it uh, for the LDD files. You can visit my my blog, mockrecipe.com. Yeah. Thank you. And then here, here's one of them. You can pass it around. So while that's going around, does anybody have questions? Questions? Lately? Does everybody know what L, L draw is? Why should you explain it? Me? Sure. I've never used it. <laughs> um, L draw. It's a CAD program for Legos. Could you go back to Actually, she can explain it.
Yeah, yeah this one? Oh, this one? Yeah. Oh. Thank you. So LDRAW is a FEM-based program. LDD is the LEGO official program. Oh. Yeah. LTT is the LEGO, right? Yeah, LEGO official program. Which is no longer supported by LEGO. They, 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 but they updated again they recently. I did this with LDD. I, I'm more used to LDD than LDRAW. I only use LDRAW to make uh, instructions. So LDRAW, if you know how to use LDRAW, it is a bit of a learning curve to figure out how to actually work it. But if you can work L, uh, LDRAW, it's faster to build in LDRAW than it is in LDD. Um, and you have access to uh, more parts and imaginary parts, as in parts in, in fan, requested colors, not necessarily only official LEGO parts. LED's part catalog is limited not only by LEGO's existing parts catalog, but further than that, it, it's limited to what LEGO has on LDD, which is not a comprehensive list of every single LEGO element in existence. So LG, yep, LED question. or LDRAW has more pieces, and it's faster to build with when it is not as easy to learn. I, I would disagree on the part uh, selection because Lego has came out with basically everything they have uh, in, in LDD. Like I, I'm speaking from a few months ago was the last time I used uh, they, 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 they made the update, they did the update, so all the new parts are in there. Yeah, yeah. Lego and Medic, you want to use old parts. Yeah. But this is your question over question? here. Question? Wait, so on LDRA, you can create your own instructions? Uh, LDRA. LDRAW is better for building instructions, yes. Because LDD doesn't let you specify which piece comes before which piece. It's very difficult, right? LDRAW lets you do that, but it's also very tedious. It's like building this thing over again. And it's, uh, the, the, the user interface is not very, is not the most intuitive. So they were talking about color palettes. If anybody, um, one of our members, we, we got access to this from the Lego company itself and they printed out a bunch of extra copies. So feel free, they're up by the front door if anybody would like to take them home with you. I see some people already have theirs, so. All right. Thank yeah. you. Any other questions? Yeah. You can always ask them afterwards. Yes, Steve? I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Uh-oh. Oh. We referred to it a couple of times very discreetly he has an amazing blog called Mock Recipes. Look for it. We would not self-promote it, just kind of slipped it in there, but it's really cool. <laughs> check it out. Also check out and his uh, subscribe to it and you can get updates when he puts something new. Uh, so it's really worth your time. All this kind of stuff on it and more. Thanks, Sure.